When I was off YouTube, a difficult time for many of you, I know, I was always thinking of new ideas of what videos I was going to do and I'll be back. And I was going to do a really proper ranty one. Things I really hate, you know, like aggressive, loud honking of car horns and dog muck and stiff breezes. But then I thought, no. 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 I realise that YouTube and, well, probably the world in general has already got far too many people being angry and cross and having hot takes and doing rants. So I thought, let's do something different. So I put my heads together and I had a really good think. And then I came up with what I think is a brand new concept for YouTube. I call it Why I Love dot dot dot. And this week is the first one. It's why I love dot 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 going to the cinema. A while ago I did a video about my lockdown resolutions, all the things that I vow to do once all the lockdown is over. Now I understand that, you know, the Delta variant means that things might be delayed, but I have made strides already in fulfilling these resolutions. I've booked to see David Baddiel's Trolls Not The Dolls later this year, I didn't put that off, and I have definitely cut down on my social media, and I've even booked to what I think uh, the youth like to call a musical gig uh, later this year, it is a sit down one. Um, but I, I'm going to do that. So I'm doing lots of things. But one of the major ones was going to the cinema more. And I am determined to go to the cinema at least once a month from now on. There is some chat that the future of cinema looks pretty bleak because of uh, streaming services starting to release movies at the same time they're released in the cinema. But if cinema was to fade away. I think that would be a massive disappointment. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm a massive fan of watching films at home, you know, mainly for the legroom. I do like legroom, but also so I can pause and go to the loo or get more booze. But for me, nothing beats the experience of being in the cinema. Going to the cinema when I was a kid was a real treat. And the reason for this was that we didn't actually go very often. You know, we wanted to, but it was, was quite expensive. There's three of us kids, plus mum and dad, there's five people. And especially when you take into account the markup at our local Granada for the sweets in the foyer for, you know, your, your revels, your jelly babies, your minstrels, your popcorn. It's a pretty expensive day out. So dad was a bit reluctant to take us all, but we did go. We did go to see some, some great films, saw Empire Strikes Back, although I think I fell asleep in that. Uh, I was very young, must have been. Uh, Jungle Book, I remember, was fantastic. But the one that really sticks in my mind was when we went to try and see Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Now, these days when you go to the cinema, you might turn up if you know it's not going to be very full and buy tickets there, but most of the time you kind of book in advance and that's fine and it's, it's all very civilised. In those days, at least in our local cinema in Maidstone, you, you couldn't book in advance. So you, for a popular film, you just had to get there early and queue. And I don't mean like queue inside, they literally locked the doors to the auditorium, to the foyer, and then you just queue outside. If it was cold or if it was raining, tough you just have to wait in the cold and the rain so for who framed roger rabbit which is a really popular film we didn't get there late but by the time we got there there was a big queue so we waited in the queue for ages and it must have been around christmas time so it was probably quite cold and then when we got near the front they said ah oh, sorry it's all full up so we did what you did in those days which was see what else was on and if there were any spare seats there and it just so happened that the film, other film that we could go and see at the time, because it was a PG, was Bill Murray's Scrooged. Um, so we were really disappointed. I mean, really upset we couldn't see Roger Rabbit. But we went into that, it's like, oh well, let's go and see that. And it was great. It really was. And actually, not getting to see Roger Rabbit, but seeing another really good film instead, has really stuck with me. And I still vividly remember that whole experience. Um, you know, and, and Bill Murray saved the day. I 
have so many incredible memories of seeing special films at the cinema. I remember going to see The Lady Killers with Alec Guinness uh, at the BFI South Bank years ago, and I'd never seen it before. It's a great Ealing comedy, and it was the communal atmosphere of everybody finding this thing absolutely hilarious, and it kind of, it, it was, the laughter was infectious. When I watched it again on DVD with a couple of friends and my brother, uh, like a year or so later, it just wasn't the same thing. It didn't have, it didn't have the same vibe that we'd had in the cinema. I remember the first time I saw Reservoir Dogs, and I'd never seen it before, and I was just at university, and I went with a friend who had seen it, and I remember it started, and then it finished. It, I, I remember just thinking, well, that, that cannot have been a film. It felt like it lasted about 30 seconds. And I still remember, and I was just, I, I remember, I was just absolutely blown away by it. And I remember my friend looking at me and smiling because he could see that I felt about it, how he'd felt the first time he'd seen it. Um, I remember taking my wife to see, uh, very early on in our relationship, to see An American in Paris, a musical with uh, Gene Kelly, which has this wonderful ballet sequence at the end, which is it's just like, you know, he just put that in. I mean, you just don't get that in any kind of film, certainly not a Hollywood film. It's this long, 15 or 20 minute, beautiful ballet sequence. And she didn't, hadn't told me that she liked Gene Kelly, but afterwards she told me that she really loved him. And that once her mum had said to her, when she saw her watching it, that life isn't a Gene Kelly film. And, um, which I suppose is technically true, but it's not, you know, you, you don't need to, to, to tell people that. And then when I think about those memories compared to TV memories, I, I can barely recall a film that I've watched on TV that's had anything like the same effect. The only one I can remember is E.T. And we got E.T. as a, um, as a bootleg video <laughs> in our village where I grew up. I think it went around the whole village. Uh, we didn't go to see it at the cinema. It's some weird bootleg video. And he got towards the end of E.T. when you think he's dying. And I remember absolutely bawling my eyes out. And I just got a really, really vivid memory of looking down and the arm of the uh, settee that I was sitting on being drenched in tears. Uh, I do remember that. But that's, that's one of the very few occasions. That's why the cinema is so special. There's something about the cinema which is different. The immersion, the big screen, the blackout, the wall of sound, the communal experience, even if there's only a few people there. The difference between watching a film at the cinema and watching a film at home on TV, no matter how big and amazing your screen is, to me is like the difference between watch, uh, going to a live sporting event and watching it at home on TV. My favourite place to go to the cinema is here at the BFI South Bank, and I absolutely love it. Um, there's no food allowed in these cinemas, which to me is brilliant. There shouldn't be food allowed in the cinema, popcorn and burgers and all that, it's horrible. Um, so there's no noise, you're allowed a nice quiet drink, but that's it. It's perfect conditions to watch films in. I've got so many amazing memories of seeing films at the BFI South Bank. It's where I discovered Ava Gardner. I love Ava Gardner, beautiful, brilliant actress. Uh, Robert Mitchum had a fantastic Robert Mitchum season a few years ago. I've seen westerns, I've seen art house films. I discovered Eric Roma, a wonderful French director that I really love. He's not everyone's cup of tea, but I just think he's fantastic. Uh, Japanese films. Uh, Korean films, all kinds of different things. I mean, I've, I've seen loads and loads of classic Hollywood here as well. Cary Grant, James Stewart, and Catherine Hepburn. Um, all you know, all the classics. It's, it's a brilliant place to be able to live fairly close to and, and come as regularly as I've been able to. Um, today, I'm going to see After Love, which is a new British film. It's supposed to be amazing. It's starring Joanna Scanlon, and it is my first trip for over a year to the cinema. So I just came out of the cinema.
cinema and um, it's a really great film After Love, really recommend it, uh, it's beautifully directed and uh, wonderfully acted, three really great performances, very moving, interesting film. Um, so definitely go and see it, After Love, it's really great. Uh, but also I just wanted to say that just before the film started it was kind of a little video and they showed a few a trailer for the upcoming Robert Altman season and um, I remember coming to see a couple of his films here before years ago and uh, Three Women and uh, Nashville in particular and it was quite emotional it really was I didn't expect that it sounds a bit weird um, but it, it was and I just thought it's brilliant to be back at the cinema I, and I, it, it really reminded me how much I love it so put together everything I said before and that is why I love the cinema. Mm -hmm.